So hi everyone. Uh, my name is Anna. I am from Italy. I am an uh, R&D search software engineer in uh, CIS. I had a com master in computer science at Padova, and I am a consultant on several uh, search strategies like Solar, Elasticsearch, OpenSearch, and so on, uh, with the focus on uh, the integration of machine learning with the information retrieval system, so uh, from recommender system, uh, learning to rank, and so on. And out from my uh, work, I'm also an organist, a uh, Latin music dancer, and an uh, orchid lover. I leave it to Ilaria to present herself. Okay, good morning, everybody. It's a real pleasure to be here for the second time as a speaker, so thanks again for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Ilaria. I'm Italian as well. I was born in Tarquinia, a national Etruscan city, but I've been living abroad in the Middle East. I earned a master in data science in Rome in 2020 and soon after joined the CIS team where I've been working as information retrieval machine learning engineer. Um, I have passion for um, machine learning and deep learning techniques and I mainly deal with their integration with information retrieval system. And in my spare time, I'm a sports lover and an ex-professional basketball player. Now, just a bit about our company, CIS, which means search services. It was founded in 2016. Uh, it is headquartered in London, but all the employees are distributed worldwide. We are open source enthusiasts. Uh, we are experts and we mainly work with Apache Lucene and Solar, Elasticsearch, uh, OpenSearch, uh, and so on. We are active researchers and we actively contribute back to the community in open source project. And our hot trend of the moment, we, we mostly work on neural search, learning to rank, document similarity, search quality evaluation, and relevance tuning. Now, this is the overview. Uh, so what we are going to cover with this talk today, how the talk is structured. Uh, we will start with an introduction about online search quality evaluation, uh, then just a brief overview about A-B testing. Uh, after that, we will dive into our Kiban implementation, the reason behind it, and we will show you how you can use some of the Kibana tools to create visualization and dashboard to compare different ranking models. And finally, just uh, some takeaways from, from this talk. Uh, let's get started with the online evaluation. Uh, online search quality evaluation is one of the most common approaches to measure the effectiveness of an information retrieval system, and it remains the optimal way to prove how a model performs in a real-world scenario. So it can give you um, ne the necessary information to evaluate, improve, and better understand the, the model behavior. Uh, both offline and online evaluation are important for a business, so one does not exclude the other. You should always monitor both the aspect, starting with uh, uh, an offline testing first and then move to an, an online one. So offline testing is the, um, is the, the most common uh, way uh, to find the most promising model before deployment. Uh, it has the advantages to find anomalies uh, in data, and you can check the performance of your model um, using a control environment that is not influenced by the external factors and without uh, uh, impacting the production system. Uh, it is faster and cheaper than, than the online one. You can rely on offline evaluation, but the, the final word of a success or failure of a release version is then decided online, where you can measure uh, live uh, the, the vital metrics uh, uh, for, for your business. So you can ac uh, actually measure improvement and regression with real users. Uh, you can identify anomalies for unexpected query and expected user behaviors. Of course, it is more expensive in terms of time and, and cost. But why, uh, why is important? Because there are uh, several problems that are to be detected with an offline evaluation. Uh, one thing is the, uh, an incorrect relevant judgment set. So um, a judgment set is composed by a query document pair associated with uh, a rating that, uh, um, that reflects how, um, how much is relevant that document for, for that query. 
So um, it may be the case uh, where you have uh, an extremely high um, evaluation performance offline, but just because you, um, you have improperly designed the evaluation set. So in that case, the result that you, that you obtain are not really uh, reflect the um, a real model improvement or a regression. And when uh, it is considered incorrect, uh, when, for example, you have just one sample per query group, so in that case, uh, uh, when, you, um, when you use the judgment set to, um, to uh, calculate some metrics like uh, NDCG at K, for example, for, for each query, uh, if you have just one sample, the NDCG will be always the same. Or if you have one relevance labels for all the sample of a, of a query, of course, the, um, the, spl the data splitting phase is, is very important. So uh, ideally, you would get two sets that follow the same probability distributions in terms of query and, and relevance label. And also, it can be the, the evaluation set too small, so it is unrepresentative of, uh, of your data. Another aspect is finding a direct correlation between the offline evaluation metrics and the parameters that you use for the offline uh, model perform the online model performance. Uh, so, for example, is could be not easy to understand how an improvement uh, in uh, how improvement in offline metrics would reflect online with real users. So, in terms of views, clicks, uh, sales, and, and so on. And finally, uh, the, um, the relevance label in the offline testing are generated um, explicitly, so using a group of, uh, of experts, or implicitly, so using a user interaction that you, that you collect, but that um, they not always reflect the real user need. So how you can compare different models uh, online? There are two types of uh, online testing that are popular in the industry, A-B testing and interleaving. In this talk, we will just focus on A-B testing because it's the one that uh, we have used in our implementation. As you can see from, from this um, slide, um, in A-B testing, generally, we um, compare two models. And uh, the users are split in two groups, usually 50-50. And then we have, um, for example, the model A, the control group, which could be uh, an old model. And then we have the model B, variation group, that could be a new model that you have just deployed and you want to compare with your own model to check which is better and to choose um, which one to, to leave in production. One important aspect to consider in the A-B testing is the noise. Uh, so as you can see from this picture, uh, we're supposed to compare two models. We can see that model A got in total 15 sales, 10 from the home page and five from the search page, while model B got in total 13 sales, three from the home page and 10 from the search page. So. Um, we can see that model A seems to be better than model B, but effectively, no, model B is better because from the search page, it got double sales in comparison to the model A. So it is, part, it is important to consider for the evaluation only the interactions that come from result pages ranked by the model you are comparing online. This could be obvious, but we ended up with some client that uh, sometimes consider just for example, total clicks in the in the website, total sales, or whatever happened in the in the website, and is is not correct. Then there are uh, various metrics that you can measure online. Uh, one of these metrics uh, model a certain aspect of the search quality. We have the click to rate, the most common one that is calculated by dividing the total click by the total of views a uh, product or document receive. If you have an e-commerce. It could be useful to calculate also the sales and the revenue rates. Uh, then another important aspect is the time spent on a search result after the click, because if a user spent a lot of time after a click on a, on a search result, it could be a good signal that this, this document is relevant for the query. And then we have the query reformulation, so how many times the user rewrite the same query. The, the goal is to achieve uh, the, a satisfactory um, level of information retrieval with as few query formulation as possible. 
and also the bounce rate, so the percentage of users that leave the search, uh, the search result page just only viewing one, one page. Our recommendation is to start with a signal that is close to as possible to your system and then monitor all of them step by step because focusing only on one metric, so for example only on click to rate, would not be optimal because the evaluation can be influenced by external factors that uh, are independent of, uh, of the search engine. Okay, now let's dive into our Kiban implementation and the reason behind it. Uh, nowadays, there are some online, uh, online evaluation tools available. Uh, we implemented this custom evaluation for a client of ours, and the online evaluation tools that we were using present some limitation, let's say, in terms of data and metrics to use. So it was not possible to use the same metrics that we used to optimize the, the model, in our case, a learning to rank model. And then it was not possible to filter unwanted data. So uh, rule out external factor, corrupted interaction. So it was not easy. So we decided to implement uh, um, this evaluation using uh, Kibana. For those who, who don't, don't know what is Kibana, uh, Kibana is a software that provides search and visualization capabilities for index data in Elasticsearch, allowing you to explore and visualize a large volume of data and create detailed reporting dashboard that we will see in in a few minutes. Uh, here are the steps of our implementation. So first you should create, or maybe you have already, uh, if you use Elasticsearch, uh, an Elasticsearch instance to be associated with Kibana. Then you should create an index with explicit mapping. Then you should set up and start uh, an A-B testing. So uh, we suppose that you have two models, model A and model B, you deploy them and you start the A-B testing. Then you should index your data, in our case, uh, user interactions. Then you should create a data view. Kibana requires it to access um, Elasticsearch um, index data. And then you can leverage uh, um, some of the Kibana tools to create visualization and dashboard for the model uh, comparison. Uh, here, in this example implementation, we suppose to be in an e-commerce of book scenario where we daily collect user interactions to understand how users are interacting with our uh, search engine. And we have uh, an index where we, in, where we store our user interaction that contains this document field. So we have the um, book ID, so an identifier of our uh, product. We have the test group to identify which model was assigned to a user group, model A and model B in our case. We have the query, that in our case was the category ID. Then we have the timestamp. It, it can be useful if you want to make a temporal analysis. Then we have the interaction type to understand which type of interaction took place in search engine. And about this field, we also created for single additional uh, field, let's say, impression, click, add to cart and sale, that they have zero or one, depending on the interaction type. We had them because we, we needed as a support for some calculation to create uh, um, some visualization that we will see in a few, few seconds. Then we have the query result count. It could be useful if you want to make an analysis based on the number of the query hits, so the, the result count returned by a given query. And finally, the user device, um, if you want to make a comparison uh, between different devices, in our case, desktop and mobile. Of course, uh, uh, you can use uh, other, other fields, other features that, uh, that you think that are important for your use case and, and your domain. In our case, we use just, uh, just this one. Okay, and then I'll pass the ball to Hanna for the visualization example part. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let's dive into our uh, analysis and uh, how we implement it exploiting Kibana tools. So uh, the first one we would like to present to you is uh, the same time series visual builder. As you can see here, this is a, a table um, that allows you to customize uh, rows and, and columns 
um, for uh, most of our evaluation, we put as row some um, term segregation on uh, most of the time the test group that is representing uh, the model. So we were able to aggregate all the interaction of the same model in a single row and directly compare the two models. And then uh, the nice thing you can do with, with uh, this type of table that is uh, different from the basic one uh, is the possibility to add some um, columns that relies on complex metrics that you would like to, to calculate. So uh, for our example, we, we uh, use as uh, evaluation metric the click-to rate and the add to cart rate. So the first evaluation that we have done that exploits this tool is the general evaluation. So as you can imagine, the first thing you would like to see for your model is how each of the modeling uh, perform on your overall uh, website. So this can give you a easy highlight on which model is, let's say, winning with respect to the other, uh, comparing our, our click to rate and add to cart rate. And this could be also useful to discover some bugs that can happen in the front end. In our case, we, for example, discover that sometimes the interaction were not passing as expected, so we have an unbalanced distribution of them, or uh, also the test group were not the one we, we expect to see in the table, so this is an additional thing you can see uh, from here. So how to implement this table? The, the first thing is defining the rows. So in our case, as mentioned before, we use a term segregation on the test group field. Here we select the first three rows, but in our case, we just have two models. So we have two single uh, rows, the model A and B. Then we define the columns. So the first metric you would like to uh, calculate is the total number of impression that is also useful for the click to rate. And this is a sum aggregation on the impression field that, uh, as mentioned by Ilaria, uh, is representing if our interaction is of type impression or not. So since we have one just for impression, just summing the ones, we can compute the total number of impression here. And the same for the total number of clicks and add to cart, just changing the field. Then uh, the most interesting part of the table, so the click to rate. Uh, here we uh, exploit the bucket script to compute uh, the formula. So we start defining the variables which we need that are uh, the total number of impression and the total number of clicks, again the sum aggregation. And then inside the painless script we were able to define uh, the division. So the total number of clicks divided the total number of impression. And the same for the to cart rate. Just changing the formula that here is the division of the add to cart with respect to, to the clicks. Here we compute uh, this analysis for the desktop interaction. So we add a filter in the panel option. This is available again in the user interface of the table. And you can add uh, in the panel filter uh, the type of um, con the condition you would like to use for, for the filtering. In this case, we choose just uh, in desktop uh, interaction. And you can clearly do the same for uh, the mobile. And here is where the dashboard comes in at. So um, the dashboard allows you to put together visualization. And here we exploit it to directly compare uh, how our models are performing on desktop interactions and, and mobile one. And then you can see here that it's very easy to, to see how they are performing and directly compare, also for the same model, so to see model A, how it's performing on desktop and then uh, into mobile. Another evaluation is the single product one. So the table seems the same, but uh, this can be useful if you would like to see um, how the models perform, I don't know, for example, in some new products. So you just had a new product in your collection and you would like to see if the model is ranking him in the way you expect. And you can exploit this table in order to compute click to rate and add to cap rate just for that product. That could be a new product or a sponsored one or, um, I don't know, some um, bestseller and so on. The only thing you need to do uh, that is different from before is uh, the filter. So here we just collect interaction for uh, the specific book ID we would like to, to analyze. 
And then uh, the last one for the time series visual builder is uh, the analysis on the performance of the model on the top executed queries. So you have, for example, model A, and you would like to see how it performs on the top uh, queries, which in this case are the most frequent ones, so the one the user executed uh, the most. And the table is similar to the one before. The things that changes are the rows, that in this case are the, the queries. Uh, in our scenario, we have uh, that the query ID corresponds to the query selected category ID. And then the additional uh, frequency column that is defining uh, how many times the queries were, was done. And it is in a descending order. So in the top five, we have the most uh, frequent queries. So we change the row. So here the time aggregation is on the query selected category, so our query ID. And we uh, selected the top five uh, rows. And then the additional frequency column. That here is uh, a value count aggregation on the query selected category. So this means that you are uh, computing uh, the number of interactions that are collapsed into the same uh, row, in the same query. And we do this for the model A, then again, you can implement the same thing for the, for the other model. Then uh, I would like to talk to you about uh, Viga. This is a very uh, customizable tool you can uh, exploit in Kibana. And this allows you to retrieve uh, the data you would like to uh, show in your visualization, uh, executing a query into your Elasticsearch index. So as you can imagine, you can implement anything you would like to, to, to query to, to Elastic and get the data back. And then you can also customize how to plot uh, your data. So to make an example, this is the first evaluation we implemented uh, with Viga, that is a vertical bar. And uh, here we analyze how our model is performing in a specific range of queries. So consider again what we have seen before, so the, the frequency for a, for a query. We decide to analyze uh, how, our, how our model perform on the search demand curve. So we uh, divide the curve into some ranges. So the most frequent queries, the medium frequency queries, and then the, the last executed ones. And then um, we report here, for example, just for the range of the less uh, executed queries, how uh, the model is performing with an average out to cart rate of all the query in the range. So let's see um, how imp we implement this. So uh, again, the first thing is retrieving the data. So you have to uh, write your Elasticsearch query. In our case, we uh, need the query. So we start by um, a term aggregation on the query selected category. Um, and then we uh, add the other elements we need that are the total number of impression click at to cart that are defined in the same way of the table, so um, a sum aggregation. And then we could uh, make our filter on the query, selecting only those that have uh, a specific impression count. So in this case, we are considering the impression count as representative of the uh, frequency of the query. So here we um, exploit the bucket selector and in the script, we put our condition, that is that the total number of impression needs to be lower or equal 180. And finally, our metrics for the evaluation. So the add to cart rate, that's defined in the same way as before. So a bucket script with our uh, division of the add to cart and clicks. Then uh, the graphical elements. So you can define a layer, that is the graphical part of Viga where you can define the type of plot you would like to, to use. In this case, we choose the, the bar plot. And then you can define what to put in the x axis and the y axis. So in this case, a uh, key uh, field is representing the query ID. And this is in the x axis. And then we put uh, the add to cart rate on the y axis. So for each query that is one bar in the plot, we can see it's add to cart rate. And then, since we are considering a um, set of queries, 
We also would like to compute the average at cart rate for all of them. So we add uh, this in two ways, as a number and as a horizontal line inside uh, the plot. So again, we can define the type of uh, graphical elements, the rule mark uh, that is the mean value for that cart rate for the number, and then the line uh, for the uh, mean uh, value, again, the add to cart um, for the horizontal line. Finally, since in your range you can have a lot of queries, it could be also useful to add a number representing how many queries are in your, in your range. So in this case, we put um, a text defining the name of distinct query ID uh, we have. And then uh, another type of evaluation similar to the one before, since we are considering ranges of query, is this one that uh, in this case is not considering the frequency, but is considering the number of results returned by the query. So as you can imagine, uh, if you have a query returning uh, a low number of results, and you will have, as in our scenario, uh, an e-commerce website, you usually have a page and you can see, for example, 10 number of products together at the same time. And if the query is returning uh, a little number of documents, for example, three or four, how they are ranked is not impacting too much the final uh, evaluation since the user is anyway seeing all of them at the same time. While if you have a lot of results for a query and you have maybe also pagination, in your website, it really impacts the, the final results, how the products are ranked. So we exploit this to analyze how the models perform on these different queries. And we would like to see if our model is making a great impact on the queries with a lot of results. So here we add an additional thing in our, uh, in our analysis. That is the um, fact that we consider common queries between our model, because you have these two models in your website and they are collecting interaction, but you cannot predict which kind of query the user will do. And therefore, uh, if you want to make a fair comparison between the models, you will decide maybe to uh, choose just the common queries that are done both uh, for the model A and model B, and then compare uh, the models just on those common queries. So. In order to do this, we start extracting the query IDs for the model A, the same for the model B, and then, and then doing an intersection between these two sets, just choosing the one in common. And the nice thing uh, you can do in Kibana is that you can uh, use this uh, list of query IDs as a filter uh, for the interactions you are going to, to use for the evaluation. And therefore, we add this as a Boolean query in the filter um, at the top of the plot, uh, just passing uh, the IDs we would like to consider for this evaluation. And then uh, here is an example of uh, how we can put all this together inside a dashboard. So since we are talking about uh, queries in different ranges of our query result count value, we decide to put in the same column uh, all the analysis of the two different models, but on the same set of, um, of queries that are the one with uh, a number of results that is less or equal 10. That on the center, uh, the ones with a value between 11 and 50. And on the right, all the queries with a number of results count that is uh, greater than 51. And again, here you can quickly uh, see which uh, model is winning, also comparing on different ranges. Also, the, the horizontal line can help you indirectly uh, see and, uh, how the models are performing and choosing the one you would like for your website. And maybe also this could lead to, to some different uh, approaches like, OK, my model is not performing as expected for the uh, queries with a lot of results, so maybe I would like to, I don't know, train a different model just for those queries and use the one I have just for another set of queries and this kind of, of things. So I leave to Ilaria for the takeaways. Thank you. Yeah, yeah let's conclude the talk with the takeaways from this, uh, from this talk. 
Okay, as we have seen before, uh, online search quality evaluation allow you to assess how system perform online with your real users, so it's important to perform uh, online evaluation and first an, an offline evaluation as well. Then we have seen the, the heavy testing. The important things to, to remember is to uh, remove or um, reduce as much as possible noise. So you should consider all the interactions that come from um, search result page ranked by the model you are comparing. So not uh, the interaction coming from other pages or other sources. And then why we, we choose Kibana? Because um, it has an easy graphical user interface to use. As we have already seen, you can put together different visualization and create detailed dashboard to see immediately the difference between, uh, between model and make different analysis. Uh, it has the ability to filter unwanted data, so you can remove corrupted user interactions, uh, interactions coming from testing uh, or coming from different sources. Uh, and also, on the other hand, uh, using the filter, you can highlight uh, data uh, that you, you can specify the data that you want to highlight. Uh, also, if you, um, if you index new data, visualization and dashboard are automatically updated. And another important thing is that you can export and import visualization and dashboard using the export object API. So this is, can be very useful because if, for example, you want to uh, reuse the same uh, uh, visualization that you created in a future project, so with different data, you just need to import uh, the visualization that you that you have exported. Just maybe uh, check uh, and, and, and change on something, but you don't need to re-implement uh, all again uh, from from the start and then yeah we have uh, seen a uh, time series visualized builder table that are good for basic comparison with custom metrics are easy to set up uh, and as we have seen we have used that we have used it for the general evaluation of uh, of the model um, for the evaluation of a single product or uh, per model uh, most frequent queries. And then we have Vega. Vega is a very powerful tool, so it's highly um, customizable in both data and graphical aspect. And we have used it for the evaluation for queries um, frequency ranges and evaluation for uh, queries its result, uh, result ranges. Vega, yes, is, is very powerful, but of course um, it was not so immediate to use, so it's recommended, let's say, for um, advanced uh, um, users that m maybe are comfortable writing uh, Elasticsearch query uh, manually. Okay, here you can find some references. Uh, we have um, we wrote three blog posts about this talk, so you can find them in our website. We have the, the first one, it's just an, an introduction. Then we have the second one, all about the visualization example. And then a third one about queries uh, in, uh, in common. So if you are curious, you can explore these uh, blog posts. You can find all the details of the implementation with the related code. And um, of course, you will also find other uh, things that we didn't cover in this talk because due to the time constraint. And also, you can find in our uh, website other blog posts that we wrote uh, in, in the past but, uh, um, about uh, um, on search quality evaluation in general, both offline and online, and also uh, about interleaving. So if now it's not the scope of this talk, uh, uh, talk about uh, interleaving because we have used A-B testing, but if you, are, uh, if you are curious, then you can reach out. Uh, Hanna and Alessandro uh, published a paper about interleaving, and also Alessandro implemented uh, uh, interleaving uh, in, uh, in Apache Solar. So if you are curious uh, about, about that, you can uh, reach out later because we are around. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Anna and Ilaria, for the presentation. Do we have any questions for them? Okay. One, two. Um. 
Thank you for the great talk. Uh, one of the questions that I have is that you show the example of the bar chart. What other possibilities do we have in the visualization other than the bar chart? The bar chart. Uh, in general, or just for Viga, in because in general there are mm, different other type of tables. You can also do a, some um, um, circle plot and this kind of thing. When you open Kibana and start creating a visualization, you can have a full view of all the, the, the type of plots you can have, and each of them have some requirements on what you can do and what you can not do on, on that type of visualization, but yeah, there are the vertical horizontal bar and some pies and all these kind of things. Okay. Um. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the talk. Um, I, I was, uh, I, I don't know if I didn't understood well, but I, I was puzzled about the concept of query category, how you categorize the queries. Uh, uh, is it based on the user input and you put the query in a specific category or how do you categorize the query? Uh, okay. Yeah, actually we, we do this for one of our clients. So this is one of the information they could give us about the query. They have this kind of e-commerce so it, every time the user search for something, this is a sort of navigation inside the website. So uh, it was not a textual query written, but it was most like a search of path uh, followed by the user inside the website. So it, it was easier to understand which was the category since you can just look at the path and see uh, what was the, the initial search of the user and categorize it. Okay. And that. Okay, so I see. So it will just represent how the user interacts with the model and you can base your, your judgments on, on this, if I understand. Okay. Do we have any more questions? Okay, um, I don't think we have anyone online as well. So um, I think um, you're still very much around, right? Are you still very much around, like if they yeah, would like to yeah. connect or, okay, yeah. Thank you very much um, for the presentation. Thank you.